Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play an Indie. Uh, today, I've got something a little bit different planned, so we're going to be checking out a... Um, I don't necessarily know if we're going to call it a game, but it's a, it's an indie um, art display, I guess, um, called Everything is Going to be Okay. Um, I will start this off with... Um, photosensitivity warning if you are prone to seizures from flashing lights um, probably suggest you skip this one other than that we're going to start off with a quick notice from the artist um, this was included with the game file we'll check it out give it a quick read and then uh, open the program up all right so everything is going to be okay this zine is or zine by like magazine the collection of life experiences Commentary on struggle, and oddly enough, my own version of a power fantasy. I've come to think that we have a backward idea of power, a perception of strength. We always have, and I think that this is a byproduct of a historically patriarchal system. From religion to politics to economics, power is viewed as how many people you can subjugate. Kind of hard to read. Carrying on, uh, respect is how many people fear you because of your power, how you can get what you want at the expense of others, how you're the biggest dog in the dog-eat-dog -dog world that we have created for ourselves. Our popular entertainment has always drawn from this point of view. It's simply fact. You use your own power to hurt your enemies and eliminate them. We really don't have a concept in our culture or discussion about alternative views of power from a survivor standpoint. How is it like for survivors? Are people that live with trauma strong? Are people that live with mental disorders or PTSD strong? Why is suicide seen as selfish and weak when the person that lived with it got as far as they did? We don't popularly view survivors, victims, traumas, etc. as strength. It is a weakness and I don't like that. I think this is because we have created a culture where we cannot really ever move past pain. We don't teach people how to heal, to overcome, or, to, or be powerful. We teach people to be perpetual survivors. We live with pain, but no way of transcending it. I think a lot of this can be credited to how we view strength. I don't think the icon, epitome of strength, should be how many people you can hurt, conquer, or overcome but how much of this abuse you can overcome. How long can you live with what happened to you? How strong are you for being here? How powerful you are for being strong because you have no other option but to be strong. Surviving is one thing, but living with it is an entirely different fight. I think this is where examples of real strength are. If approached from this point of view, then it's an obvious conclusion that you should be celebrated simply for being here. You are normal for your imperfections and the way you cope. You are the hero in the story of your life. You have every right to be proud. These are a collection of very abstract life experiences. Things I felt while going through hard times. How I felt, moved on, afterward. A lot of it is presented via humor, creates ridiculous circumstances, because I feel like life is ridiculous. It's one damn thing after the other, and after a while, there's nothing left to do but laugh at it. Humor is what helps take the edge off. Perhaps even create a platform tr for transcendence. Either way, it's been carthetic. I believe this artist's signature down there. Um, so, yeah, that's a pretty... Pretty tough, I guess, statement, if you want to call it that. Um, pretty tense. I kind of agree with a lot of what is said, though. I mean, when you have something in your life that is quite challenging and you, and you find the strength to carry through that, maybe something bad has happened or maybe your whole life's been challenging and yet you're, you're still there, you're still fighting day after day. Um, and maybe it's not even an experience. Maybe it's something you're born with, uh, like anxiety or depression or uh, something else like that. And every single day, you know, you fight. You, you never stop fighting. And I think there's some strength to be found in that. So, really good statement. Um, let's uh, check out the experience. Now, I did open the file before. It made some loud noises. Uh, so, cover your ears. Oh, 
Here we are. So I'm just gonna drop the volume down a little bit. Alright, so we got a bunch of pages one through three are missing. So page one. I'm not afraid. What? I'm not afraid of death. Some days I wish it upon myself so much. What's that? So worn out by self preservation. Add it up to here. One more of these, and I'm walking out on life. It's not going to fight it this time. I just can't. I don't know how I'll survive another. Please don't. I want life to know that I don't need it, shit. It really has to start being nice to me if it wants to keep me. I'm not afraid of death. I try to like. I try to act like this is something to be proud of. It's probably not. I compensate because I'm afraid of life. I'm so terrified of it. Pessimism. Life for a tangible entity, I would run from it. Oh, we've got hope. Hope. Something to feel in me. Maybe hope in a hopeless situation. It's something to believe in between deep breaths that comp contemplate moments. What ifs? Past never forgets. Faith to clutch close to the heart. Faith to crush. It's an art. Just to be here. Salvaging hope and passing moments. Contemplating stars. It is the same place returned to over and over. Hopeless feelings shattered by embittered moments. When is it over? Will it ever be? Do things get better? I hope, considering things to be broken, crushing jaws, hope to hold, salvaging hope. Perhaps the mother of misery. Dear hope. Do you hear me? Maybe. Hope. Is there an end? Can I shine? Even outshine these dark pits of despair? Life is a familiar friend to the cruel. To be fair, there is air to be clear. Persistence to heal, I must ask of you. Can I thrive? Can I believe past what I know? Getting old. Hope. Can't do this anymore. Yet faith is what I hold, what I want to buckle and fold. Somehow I know. I see light in between streaming cracks of concrete circumstance. There is hope. I know. Life for a person, I would shun life, hate life, and resent life for everything that it put me through, for everything it did to me. I would seek justice, use life, and want to see it persecuted to the public fullest extent of the law. Oh, death is easy, life is not. And somewhere you're coming from. I've got three what ifs and an all of this. This game is very heavy already. What if holds the future that holds all uncertainty over us? The future that promises that past to revisit. It's the dread of maybe another encounter with homelessness, poverty, hunger, violence, all the things that I can't control. The things out of my control, the things that spiral and see me fighting for life, these circumstances that I have no say in. Things I have no choice over. I want to have a choice, but I know I don't. I control none of this. I'm terrified that I have no control. Being here, alive, means that I must rescind that control to something as chaotic and cruel as life. All of this. Choice is what we believe in so that we feel safe, but we really don't have much of it when it comes to life. It's the circumstances that I have to say, have no say in that remind me just how fickle all this is. I can rebuild, but impermanence will see it torn down. I can heal, but I will be broken all the same. These things held over me. The future casts a shadow of uncertainty. That's where you feel the most helpless about life. It's the circumstances. It's also the beauty of chaos. Those moments we carve for ourselves. The loves we give to other. The love we find in ourselves. The courage to love. The moments we cultivate under a shadow of uncertainty. Knowing that nothing lasts. It's the hope that we have things that can get better. Even if all the world is screaming to the contrary. It's the beauty of chaos. It's the beauty of persistence that keeps me here. 
to survive, you have to be stubborn. You have to love. It's a hard-earned realization, but there are so many of those these days. If you're if you're at it long enough, you start contradicting. Sorry, if you're at it long enough, you start to see how contradicting and pointless it is to hold on to beliefs. They unmake themselves constantly, and permanent points of views, angled perceptions, or stances to take with a strong. They're all helpless, all the same. Things change, but maybe that's the beauty of all this chaos. A long time ago, it left a strong impression. I remember listening to the life story of a lady. Like many, hers was one of heartbreak, betrayal, and loss. Justice had failed her, and the world forgot her. A hard story to listen to, one reminds you just how much life can cut straight to the heart. You'd think that she'd have broken by now, crushed by it all, a recluse like my grandmother maybe. Grief takes its toll in many shapes and form. Not hers though, she was the opposite. She glowed with enthusiasm for life. After that, she would not waste another moment. She passionately lived for what she lost. Maybe a dysfunctional relationship to be to, to that thing called life. Excuse me. To love her after all that it did. But seeing her it was clear that love comes out of the love that you have for yourself. It's a kind of pride. Not that all this chaos needs another belief system, especially those who've come apart. You know what? This this is I need something different. Give me anything different. Let's play Jump for Joy. A little, little skeleton man. He can jump. Congratulations, you've won. Oh shit. What was that? Let's try some easy chess. Let's uh... This is this is easy chess, I suppose. Checkmate, you win. All right, I beat easy chess. Um, go go fish, go go. Says Coco Fish is gone. So you press the button and hope the fish stays on the screen. You don't really have any control over it. You can just tell it to start and it decides where it wants to go. Nice. Okay. Sorry, but help is unavailable. <laughs> Of course it is. All right, let's see what else is on here. Missing page two. Say two. An eight. Is this? All right, let's check it out. While under another spell of depression, I was struggling not to cry, trying hard to keep it to myself. This is hard to read. Lights or not? Oh. Let's drop a bunch of crap on here. I like that. <laughs> okay. Well, under another spell of depression, I was struggling not to cry, trying hard to keep it to myself. She looked angrily at me and said, Why do you love your pain more than me? A small pause followed before she finally added, Why are you so attached to your darkness? Oh god, how did it show this time, I thought, mortified that maybe I was leaking obvious sadness again. I wish I could talk. I want to scream. What is wrong with me? She left the room clearly upset. Guilt started gnawing at me again. I hate that line of questioning. I don't know what to say to it. I don't know what to do. I try so hard to hide it. I can't keep doing this. Sometimes the people closest to you are your greatest estrangement. Hmm. 
is save a JPEG? Okay, hold on. Ooh. Something like that happens to you. You really can't can't really talk about it. You can only act normal. Hey, I love normal. I'm normal. I actually do get this because I um, do fight and struggle with depression myself. Have for it's probably my whole life, as, as far as I can remember. And uh, this this right here, where you you don't even know that you're acting depressed, and other people see it in you, and they try to help you by by talking to you and trying to trying to figure it out, but they they don't really. Um, geez. they don't really get what it is that you're going through, and so sometimes that can make it challenging. They don't really understand what being depressed is. They think you're just sad, when it's definitely a whole lot more than that. Overshare. I'll never forgive. I'm moving. Okay, this is... We'll just move on. There, there's a lot to check out, and we're already 15 minutes deep, so. Sing page three. Type a name and secret to log into home. Secret, eh? Did you know computers think we're cute because we are so helpless? Yep. Human brain can only process so much information. Computers can process infinite infinity. Think about this. No, wait. Don't. Your brain might melt. You know, all computers are watching you. The welcome screen sings you a small song. It's like a lovely greeting. All the surge of data resonates throughout the empty space of this OS. Okay. Start button. Help. Help. Help me. My name is Igor, and I am mortally trapped in this window. Please help. Anybody help? Tell me more, Igor. Oh god, I keep getting trapped in things. This is not fun. I want my body back. Somebody help. I can't feel my legs. I am legit frightened. The color scheme is too dark here. Help. Please. I was human once, just like you. Then I got stuck in a computer. My entire body was sucked in through the virtual realm through that old CRT monitor. It was a hand-me-down. I fell asleep at the desk of a very unimportant office job. The next thing I knew, I woke up in Outlook Express. Maybe I should have had more coffee. You know that feeling. This was a long time ago. I've been utterly trapped in the virtual realm ever since. Everything here is so sticky. You can track in things. The other day, it was a PDF. Yes, I got stuck in a PDF. Almost two. Almost escaped two, but not enough people to help. You have to crowdsource escape these days, you know. God, I miss food. I love coffee. I was an average Joe, you know. I think that's why nobody ever came looking for me. Nobody misses me. I just kind of always wanted to blend in. It took forever to escape from that email program, I tell you. Lots of email to get stuck in, and oh god, that spam. Spam is so sticky. I eventually escaped that mess by attaching myself to an email and sending it to absolutely everyone in the office. Someone eventually opened it, and then I was free. Free for a while. Then I got stuck in various parts of the internet. In HTML comments on a bunch of websites, too. This one HTML comment still has a copy of me trapped there forever. The virtual realm is a complicated existence. Nobody helps, you know. They all think that this is a joke. Like, haha, look at the text, asking for help. But really, I just want to escape back into my human form. How long has it been? Is Outlook still around? My monitor resolution was running 800 by 600. Maybe that's how I got sucked in. Monitors are too big. You know what? Sorry, Igor. I can't help you either. I was going to say, is this the correct time? I... <laughs> I do have some stuff to do today. Now I notice it is very, very not.
All right, so let's open up my home. Nope, cycled in. Sad file. I'm not sad. I'm just named that way. Please don't go away. Please don't give up on me. Oh. That or final sis. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. I'm an essay. Pretty sure I'm one. I'm not a well-written essay, though, but an essay nonetheless. That's probably why I'm in here. They didn't like me. They are such critical writers. Sorry, buddy. Instructions. Do not read these instructions. Hey, this is the remake. Read me for everyone. I really like doing this. Let's see if there's a limit. I guess I can't read the instructions. All right, what's going on? <laughs> Everything's going in there. <laughs> you found a friend. Any more friends? There's a sad friend. And a happy friend. Almost caught him. Oh, I killed it. Kill them all. Sorry, friends. Oops. Did they go back in here? You used all your friends. Oh, no. That's a stinky foot. We're gonna check out a couple more pages here, and then uh, we're gonna call it. So, just a random page twenty. Right. Please kill me! Please kill me! Absolutely. Need your friends. I miss this friend already. <laughs> I'm controlling this. Believe it or not. Okay, so the way he's looking, it's like a. Your friends. So I want him to be looking all the way over. Give him a nice big jump. Oh, you made it. You did it. You saved your friend. You are a good friend. Good. I did it. Into food. Uh oh. Um. Oh, jeez. Oh no. When blah 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 happens, it's often after blah. Yeah. 
social anxiety simulator. Oh no. Name a color. I'm doing good. I'm hanging in there. That's interesting. I never thought of it that way. Well, ignorance is blah 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 blah. You need more yeah, color. I totally agree. You're overthinking color. No. No. Ah oh, shit. Blah 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 blah. Tastes good though. Yeah. Food. You are so weird. Oh no. All the blonde and old happening today. Uh -huh. uh, something pertinent to color. Um, amaranth. Not so much war automation, but more of a global war and policy are in politics. <sighs> Economic robot issues? I resonate hard with this little creature here. Alright, we're gonna close that though. And we'll just give this a uh, big old close. Leave it on the screen here. So, that was everything that's going to be okay. Um, highly suggest you check it out. Give it a download. Um, the artist is asking for $10, but it is a pay what you want game slash artwork. So, you can download it free of cost should you choose or uh, donate whatever you want. If you got a couple bucks kicking around in your PayPal, feel free to drop it by for them. Um, I definitely do want to spend more time checking this out. I just don't want this video to run on forever and it there is a ton of content in here. Um, hopefully you were able to hear everything I was saying clearly. Um, there was a lot of reading there which I'm normally not used to in my videos. Uh, but if you did enjoy, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.